The following is a pre recorded show. Welcome to Winning in Retirement with your host, Brian Akers, certified financial planner professional and founder of Akers Financial Group. Now, helping you win in your retirement, here's Brian Akers. Welcome to Winning in Retirement. I'm your host, Brian Akers from Akers Financial Group. This radio podcast show, Winning in Retirement, is put on by Akers Financial Group. I'm Brian Akers, certified financial planner, president, and founder of Acres Financial Group. Here with me today is Paul Franco. He's got his MBA. He's been a financial advisor and working here at Acres Financial Group for more than seven years, almost eight years. Yeah, it's been a while now. Absolutely, Paul. You're doing a great job with our clients, and I know they appreciate it, and I know you have a big fan club on the radio. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, they love they love to point out how they great- They grade you. They grade you, you know, give you a level. Well, they always say how great you do, and they say nothing about me. That's not right. That's not right. I, that's what I tell them, but it's okay. It's all right. I understand. It's one of those things, like when you're consistent, you, you just play it out. That's just the way the way life is. Yeah, well, you've been doing this for a long time, Brian, so. Yeah, that's a good thing and a bad thing. It's been a long time, but you've been, I've been through a lot of markets up and down, a lot of things going on. Um, and what we, what I wanted to do with um, our Winning in Retirement show, especially today, is try to explain to people that it's okay to ask questions, that it's okay to come in not knowing everything, because that's what coaching financial advisors are for is to guide you where you are and lead you into proper decisions so that you're going to be okay through all your retirement years. And what's cool is that um, Paul and I have been working this week on getting this show. And what we like, I always love the show this week in baseball. And the reason is I just, I just like that concept. So this is a little bit of this week in financial planning and that we're going to talk about a show as we call it your important questions. Uh, what we're going to try to do is tackle um, the questions that we have. We're going to divide it by quarters. We're going to cover when can I retire? Will I have enough income to retire? I pay too much in taxes. What can I do? I need help with how to invest. Those basic four questions. Uh, these are examples, and we'll have examples of people we have met with in, the, in just the last few weeks. These examples may be just like you or possibly close or, of course, not even like you at all. It's just you already know all that. Whatever the yeah. answer is for your situation, we're going to cover how we answer these questions, not just give you the answer, but the how. Yeah, it's so it's so ironic as we're working through this together. It's just looking at it for the past two weeks and just to think about just a few questions of the many questions that we get. And so there's it's, it's so important to recognize that any question is a good question. And so these four questions are just four of the many we get in any given week. You seem real chipper about that. Any question is a good question. Do you really agree with that? That I, any question is a good question? Your eyes don't roll back your head on some questions. I well, no, no. I, the the <laughs> oh, reality is that I try. I try to be. I try to be respectful where I can be. Nice, nice. <laughs> that's good. Well, I think it's the right thing to think. The mentally come into it saying, "Yeah, any question is good. We'll try to address it." Some questions make us worry about yep. what they have done with their finances. <laughs> Sometimes the questions are, all right, what are they really asking? And so it is a, a mental game of question and answer and trying to figure out what is right for that person. So I, I would say, Brian, that it's more important to listen. <laughs> exactly right. As the advisor. So yep. if we're the advisor talking too fast, too soon without listening to the question. Correct. And then asking a question back to you to be able to find out more information to answer the question for that person. Exactly. And that's where we got to drive down to. So it's not a standard little report we do or anything like that. It starts with questions and talk about you and your unique financial fingerprint, knowing where you are so that we then can guide you on some ideas and answers and then basically drill down to what is the right answer for that one question. Right. And that's something we do for all of our clients. You know, they come in and they have all these questions. They, they want to know what we can do to sort of better their situation. Um, and then what we do as advisors is especially the first meeting, we just sit down and listen to you. Um, we take it all in, we write it down. We think about other questions to ask you. And then that next meeting, those next few meetings, we gather more information and sort of help build out that plan for you to answer those questions. Absolutely. So the first great thing is for you to question your financial plan. You like to think about it. Hey, I should have a question about my plan. What is my question? I have a I have a lot of questions. That's all good. You get those questions now. Get a coach, a financial advisor. All right. So Paul, we're going to do this now. Paul, have you had a client come in and ask you when can I retire? Yeah, I would I would say that about seventy five to eighty percent of the clients that come in that's one of the first questions they ask me. And yeah. so it's it's actually funny because 
um, that's, that's just a, that's a topic. And obviously our show is winning in retirement. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, that's a main topic for people that they're concerned about is they don't want to work or they want to know when they can stop working. And so that question of when can I retire something we get a lot. And the reality, Brian, is that it looks different. The answer looks different for each person. And so it's, it's funny. I, I did have one, um, the past within the past week and, um, she, she's incredible. She's a, she's a federal government employee. She's been one for 40 years. Um, her, her job, she's, she tries to explain to me what she does. And I, I, all I, all I can do is kind of sit there and listen and say, wow, that's, that's, that's important. <laughs> and yeah. so, um, the, the conversation we have, and like I'm saying where, where it's different for each person is that for her, when she came in and sat down and we sort of went through her plan and what she has set aside now, the answer, Brian was actually, yes, you can retire today. And so that's, that's sometimes a topic where sometimes it's, you know, we need to do more to save more, work through other strategies to build out more retirement income. She has worked so hard to build up her retirement nest egg. She has 40 years in the federal pension. She has a husband that was in um, Maryland's pension as well. Um, now, for that specific example, what we had to do was say, okay, you can retire, but how can you retire? And so that's almost that next layer of uh, that next layer of questions. But um, so, so that was the, the one most recently within the past week where it was like, hey, yeah, actually, technically, you could retire today if you wanted to. I know you love what you do. Uh, my joke with her is that three years from now, which is when, when her contract for what she's do, working on is going to expire, um, is that when, when that happens, they're not going to let her leave. And so it's almost going to be trying to pull her into retirement is my, my joke with her. Yeah. I, as you're telling the story, I just think about all these different people I met. You know, I've had one person that came in and said, oh, I retired yesterday. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so there wasn't a win. Can I retire? It's like, I retired yesterday. Now what? Figure it out, right? <laughs> it's like, oh, well, yes, that's like after the fact. I can't prepare for anything. I can't plan any of that. So that was a hard one. The, so the idea, when can I retire? And you came out with the lady who's financially independent. Yeah. Now, what's wonderful is to be able to tell people, yes. You've done all the right things in your life, and after examining the numbers, you're okay. I think that's a great thing to do. The, the worrisome that people have is, when can I retire? Is will they have enough, and will and does it work? How to draw money out? It's sort of it's a beginning question into the whole um, aspect of everything and planning, and that's why we think planning is so important. So we had what. One, I guess they came in three weeks ago, and then yesterday they came in for the second meeting. And what we were trying to go over with them is really, first of all, uh, what do you want to do? What kind of timing plan? You know, all these important dates, 59 and a half, 62, 65, 67, or 66 and eight months on the F FRA date, all those important dates. And we talked about different times. And then the, the first thing I told them in planning, we'll figure out, are you financially independent now and then you work because you want to? Or do you want to get to a certain level of assets to know you're okay? And then what happened was the question I usually ask back is going to be really, well, what do you need? What are you going to work on? And that's going to be one of our, our future topics here. But that when can I retire? I think it's a great question. Um, is there any one thing? I mean, I have the answer to this one. Is there any <laughs> one thing when they say, when can I retire? You ask them one question and you say, yes, you can retire. Yeah, my ver my one question is how much money do we need to live off of? Yeah, and that's sort of sort of where we we frame that as can you retire? I, it's almost like on the most basic, uh, just it's almost a financial calculation, right, Brian? It's yeah. it, from a basic standpoint, if you if your monthly expenses are zero, yep. which is unrealistic, but if it was zero, mm -hmm. technically your monthly income need is zero, <laughs> and so. As as unrealistic as that is, it's an equation of trying to match your expenses expenses with income. And that so, sounded like a college kid. You know, they they live at home. Uh, <laughs> their expenses are zero. Discretionary discretionary income is a thousand percent. Exactly. <laughs> so, You're exactly right. All right. So my question back to them would be: Is is your house paid off? And the reason I ask that is because exactly what you said. It's like, well, if the house is paid off, they have very little bills. But also the house paid off usually means a discipline, live within their means, approach that over a lifetime, they've been able to, to attack debt and get rid of it. And I said, usually when somebody walks in our door with their house paid off, they can retire. Um, not everyone likes that answer because a lot, a lot of people have mortgages and they don't know if they'll ever pay it off. Um, that with They have low interest rate mortgages, like why should I pay it off? I agree mathematically with that as long as they've saved enough to pay the mortgage because- right. 
Now your investment has to pay the mortgage. So it is leads to a lot of other planning. But this question, when can I retire? I think it's a, a combination of who are you? Like I had a situation where um, I think but the wife is 67 and she's, I'm retiring now. And then the, the husband was like 60. And then her the next comment was, oh, he's not retiring now. Well, she, that's, that's exactly what you hear, right, Brian? I have another client where it's that um, when, the, when the spouse is older, she says, he's not allowed to retire until I retire. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, in reality, I've had this one lady, she's like seven years older. And so she's been retired for five years. And he's like, all right, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. And then August 1st uh, was the first date for them to actually retire. And so for him to retire with her. And so now they actually need more money. Oh, yeah. Because now they're going to actually be on the go. Yeah. So when can I retire is a great question, a great opening question, and a great reason to see financial advisor, to go over with them your situation, to find out how to develop a way to get to that answer. So how do you get to that answer? Yeah, that's that's exactly the next point. Is it's, As much as it might be a yes or no on can I retire, there's that next layer we have to attack after that on the how can you retire. And so that's going to be a battle of cash flow and working through income versus expenses, which I know we'll talk a little bit about today. Mm -hmm. um, but, but it's so important to have a plan and say, regardless of can you retire today, we need to look at how can you retire and how to make it work. Absolutely. Because the hardest part is that we have to look at all the numbers. We have to get, gather information. So like on our website, acresfinancialgroup.com, you'll see under documents – a list of documents we need to go through to be able to begin an answer, to be able to dive in and say, based on what you show us, because we want to see everything, this is what the real answer is. Yep. So at Acres Financial Group, we're going to talk about your dreams, your goals, what you want to achieve. That is what we do. We do that for our living and it's financial planning. We've helped many people retire. When you get ready to retire, it's for your first time. So we want it to be your first time and your only time because it's done right. So at Acres Financial Group, we do want to discover your financial fingerprint through our process of going through who you are and what you've been able to accomplish throughout your life in building your net worth and your assets and your pension and your income. And that all comes into this answer of how can you retire. If you'd like to find out more about that, you can go to our website at acresfinancialgroup.com or you can give us a call at 833-WIND-RETIRE and schedule a free in-person meeting with one of our team of advisors. That's 833 833- W-I-N-R-E-T-I-R-E. -E. We'll, you also can call 833-946-7384 or visit our website, acresfinancialgroup.com. Scroll down to the bottom of the, our homepage, schedule a meeting right there. So go ahead and give us a call, 833-WIN-RETIRE or go to acresfinancialgroup.com. Cash flow is the key to retirement. We'll explain more when we return. You're listening to a pre-recorded show. Welcome back to Winning in Retirement. Call 833-WIN-RETIRE now to schedule a visit with Brian and his team and begin winning in retirement. Once again, here's Brian Akers. Yes, indeed. Welcome back to Winning in Retirement. I'm Brian Akers from Akers Financial Group. Here with me today is Paul Franco, also from Akers Financial Group. We're both financial advisors from Akers Financial Group. And we're here with our show, Winning in Retirement, our radio podcast, here to talk about our topic for today, which is this, your important questions. When people come in, they have an important question, ready to go on that question. We want to tell you what those kind of questions are and how we try to answer it and how we deliver the answer over time and deliver it throughout their retirement years. The first question we covered was in the first quarter, and that was called, when can I retire? And that leads us to the second quarter. And the big question is this. We know that cash flow is the key to retirement. Now, why is cash flow so important? And so, Paul, here's the question that I'm going to have to ask you is um, people say, will I have an in enough income to retire? And, of course, that leads to cash flow. But the question is, is how do you answer, will I have enough income to retire? Yeah, so what we have to do is we, we take a look, um, we sit down and help look, one, organize where all your money is. So that's the first thing we want to do is organize where where all your money's at. Because sometimes it's not as simple as a few accounts. It could be accounts all over the place. You might be finding accounts that you don't even remember you had. And so organizing those accounts can then lead us to that next question of, okay, how can we maximize these accounts to provide income for you and an income for you to provide for retirement, but also income that you cannot outlive? Because right. the reality, Brian, is that 
people are living longer. I know you're seeing that and I'm seeing that. Um, people are living well into their 90s. And so we need to have an income plan of cash flow and income that's going to provide you well into your 90s so that you don't have to go back to work when you're 85. <laughs> Yeah, that's not a successful plan. In Unless it's your choice. You know, there's... Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, <laughs> The answer is you can work as long as you want and, exactly. and, and do what you like. And then we have to build the plan around that. But you also got to answer to the spouse who doesn't want to work <laughs> that long. Right. All right. So this hard thing is this, is cash flow. Cash flow, some people are great with their money and they are savers. Um, average normal Americans are not savers just by habit, just because... We get induced by all the things America offers, and it all costs money. The more you watch TV, the more you want to buy stuff. There's all kinds of habits out there or that aren't good, of course, bad habits that lead towards spending. So the idea is cash flow. Let's try to break that down, why it's so important and why it is so, such a big deal when we're trying to answer about enough income. All right. Well, think about it as the in, in the sense of, okay, you're leading up, getting ready to retire. You're going to likely have Social Security in some capacity, mm -hmm. which we can estimate, and we can have a whole conversation on that another time. But Social Security, maybe a spouse's Social Security, you might have a pension, you might have some other investment income, it could be rental property, rental real estate, we don't know. It could also be where you're taking income from investments. And so we have to almost take our fixed income streams that we have look at our annual living expenses that we have now and try to work through the calculation. Okay. Okay. How much of this living expense that you have now can we wipe out with the social security and pensions? There's going to be a number left over that we need to solve for. Yep. If we want to one, keep our retirement where our lifestyle stays the same. And so we keep our lifestyle and living expenses the same as you were when you were working, then we need to have money set aside to provide income to meet that difference. The alternative is you cut your living expenses dramatically, or like we talked about and what you said before in the first quarter, Brian was maybe you pay off a mortgage, maybe you pay off some debts and then free up cash flow that way as well. And it's so a, it's a battle of cash flow, right? It sure is. It, it certainly is. Yeah. So when, um, as you're going through that, my brain's thinking about a thousand different ideas, but one of them is how do you know what you need? You know, it's just a, the simple concept of how do you know what you need? One of the ways I've been trying to explain it to people is, well, what is your net bring home right now? And then we want to compare the plan to that. Now, if you're living okay on that, then that's going to work. If you're not living okay now, then we have an issue. We're going to have to figure out what to do. The things that you see, Paul, that would trigger they're not doing okay, but let's say they show you all their different things. What are some triggers that, that you think that they're not doing okay? Well, we can look at one, just the bank account. And when the bank account, whether even if they're making 401k contributions, retirement account contributions, if our balances keep going down, that likely means we're spending more than we're even bringing in from our take-home pay. Yeah. So if they have no emergency fund, no money in the bank, you'd have to question, where is it going, right? Yep. That's uh, exactly right. And the other thing I look at is, um, do you have credit cards? And if they say, yeah, I pay it off every month, that's great. And then some people say, I pay it off every month, but... <laughs> right. um, but the fact that, well, a couple of months were negative months, negative meaning you brought in so much, that's the positive. You spent more than you made, you have a credit card or you reduce your savings. And then the credit card builds and builds because you're negative every month. And then the idea is this, that your cash flow doesn't work now. How is it going to work in your retirement? You got to get it fixed today. Yeah. And we want to, and we really do in our planning, want to overestimate the expenses that you have, because there are going to be those months where there's more spending. And that could be in summer, in the summer when you're traveling, could be Christmas for the kids and grandkids. Right. Um, you know, there's going to be months where your, your, your cash flow might not look as great. So we need to plan for that, especially in our retirement years when we're on a fixed sort of income. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had, I had this one guy the other day. We, we wrote a number in there, let's say 3700 a month. And he goes, oh, I don't make that now. And I said, well, how much do you bring home? He said 2500 a month. I said, all right, so that means your expenses are less. Now, when you bring home money, that's your net after tax, after health care. So whatever your net is, we got to add in what retirement expenses are going to be. Taxes and your health care are major expenses, and that's why it actually looks higher than your bring home now. So when we squeeze it too far down, we got to build back in the reality of retirement, healthcare, what's it going to cost? What might it cost? What else do you want to do? 
if you have been working a lot, you don't travel as much. If you want to travel more, they, they want money. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, no, you're exactly right. The taxes are a huge part um, as well. When you really look at it from, you know, say somebody needs, they say they need $100,000 a year after tax to live off of. Yep. And I had that just this past week. Mm-hmm. When we look at, when we take a look, and this is a newer client, we look at their overall portfolio, it's all pre-tax money. It's all going to be taxable. And so what that means is if we're trying to bridge to social security at full retirement age, which would be 67 in their case, we need to create income to la- to live off of $100,000 a year after tax, yep. which when we look at the calculation and say, okay, that's about $42,000 more gross we have to withdraw, 142000 to get the hundred. Yeah. It's a sobering, we don't have enough money saved. <laughs> right. Because reality that IRA or retirement 401k, the millionaire 401k, it's sitting there. It's not all your money. A portion of that goes to taxes. And then if we can work the plan over time, we maybe we can control it. But the idea is that that tax will have to be paid. Now, what you're basically saying is if you want a hundred, you don't just tax the hundred, you got to tax the tax. Unless you get, unless you want 70, yeah. <laughs> that's using a 30% effective tax rate, which I mean, it's very realistic. That's 22 federal and 8%. Yeah. And, and 8%. So married filing jointly, if you make a net tax one come over 94, 97,000, all of a sudden you're in that 20, um, 2% bracket for now. And then um, the 8% for the state of Maryland, other states could be cheaper. Those are why some people make decisions on retiring somewhere else to save a little bit of money on taxes. You're exactly right. But you know, all these factors tie into retirement. But when you come in and you have this important question of, do I have enough income? It always comes down to what do you need? What's your cash flow? Where's the money going? What's going on with the money? And have you been a good steward of that money throughout your life? Now, if you're not, we need you to work on that and you need to have a, a, a budget, know where your money's going. And then we can start really understanding that retire, what do you want to, want to do? And let's add some expense into it and see, um, can your portfolio provide it? That leads me to this other question. All right, they have a portfolio. They, they have their other income, social security and things and, and pe- little pension, things like that. And then they have their portfolio of money they've saved. Is 4% a doable withdrawal rate? Is it too low, too high? Is it a doable withdrawal rate? I think it is. I think using the 4% withdrawal rule, you some people argue you can take a slightly higher withdrawal rate now, maybe 5% um, because of where interest rates are. Um, the reality, though, is that I like to use a 4% withdrawal rate still in our calculations to figure out how much can we withdraw off our in- from our investments without really touching principal. And so that's an incredible, I still love using the 4% rule. It's a great rule of thumb. What I would say though, Brian, is that it's going to be different for each, each client as well as related on health. Um, also what they have saved the other income sources. So it's really important to sit down and work through that plan. Yeah. The reason we use the number four is the fact that we want to make more than four. And if you make more than four, then you can actually get pay raises in your retirement years. If you milk the cow or take too much out, what happens is there's no money left in to grow to have more accessible later. So the idea of four, now a few years ago when interest rates for almost a decade were way down low, what happened was people questioned even a 3% withdrawal. We've been at four and that worked out well. And then the thing is, is four is going to work out well. It's going to be a little easier to get four, but the hard part is keeping up with inflation. Exactly. That's going to stay and maintain over the next 12 years. I mean, yeah. you think about portfolio and cash flow coming in on your pensions and everything. What if your expenses double over the next 12 to 15 years? Right. Yeah, Brian, you're exact. I had a client just the other day that his his response, him and his wife, his well, it was the husband's response was that, well, interest rates right now are around 5%. You can get risk-free. I'm going to live off of, I'm going to be drawing less than that, 4%, and I'll be happy putting my whole portfolio in 5% risk-free investments. The first thing I said to them was that that one 5% long-term rate of return is not a great rate of return on your money. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, it's not going to keep pace with inflation over time. And so it has to have a real rate of return after inflation, after tax, you have to have some money in the stock market during your retirement years. Exactly. That portion is based on risk, based on income need. The less income you need, the more lower risk you can be. But the reality is the more income you need, you probably need to have higher risk. That higher risk might only be 50%, 60% of your portfolio or a little less, but it still needs to have some money in the stock market to be able to beat inflation over time. Very, very important. 
Absolutely. Yeah. So this this segment has been all about cash flow. Um, will I have enough income to retire was the question, and cash flow is the answer. All right, at Acres Financial Group, uh, we're local. We're independent. We don't report to a big company on Wall Street. We report to you. We do have offices in Lutherville and Farstow. We meet clients all around the state, all around the Mid-Atlantic region, even all around the country and a few around the world. It's so easy to begin winning in retirement. Just give us a call and schedule your, your free meeting with one of our team of advisors by calling 833-WIN-RETIRE. That's 833-W-I-N-R-E-T-I-R-E. We'll give you a call on Monday to schedule your free in-person meeting with one of our team of advisors. Go to acresfinancialgroup.com or call us at 833-946-7384 to start planning for your retirement now. They say the only things that are certain are death and taxes. The good news is we can control the taxes. We will explain when we get back with more of winning in retirement. You're listening to a pre-recorded show. Welcome back to Winning in Retirement. Call 833-WIN-RETIRE now to schedule a visit with Brian and his team and begin winning in retirement. Once again, here's Brian Akers. I'm Brian Akers from Akers Financial Group, and we welcome you back to the second half of Winning in Retirement. This is Acres Financial Group's radio podcast, and we welcome you to our show that we're doing today called Your Important Questions. If, you, if you're just tuning in right now, you've missed two great segments. The first one was about an important question about when can I retire, how we advisors at Acres Financial Group talk about the question, and then how we try to answer it. And then in the second quarter, we covered, will I have enough income to retire? And we gave you the secret sauce, the idea of cash flow, and how to handle. We talked about 4% rule and many other things. You can go to our website at acresfinancialgroup.com. Under the radio podcast tab, you can hear that show and, and catch up to the segments you might have missed. Or you can also go to any uh, other podcast source. All right, Paul, this is the second half of the show. We're doing a pretty good job of covering it. I believe we can get, do better. We can do more. I'm ready. You are ready? you ready? I, I don't know if I'm as ready as you are. You seem very prepared today. It's great. <laughs> No, it's a very, I mean, we're passionate about these questions and what we do every day for our clients. So yeah. it's hard not to be excited about it. Yeah, I didn't want to imply that you're never prepared, but you always are prepared. <laughs> but today you're extra excited, got super excitement going. And that's great because what we're talking about is an important question that we've actually had in the last couple of weeks. So this isn't a, a, you know, like a studious um, research project. This is, oh, this is what happened this week in financial planning. This is what we're covering. Here in the third quarter, though, we got a great topic and it says, they say the only things that are certain are death and taxes. Hey, Paul, do you, did you know who actually said that? Who was, before? Brian? Right, I would so, have thought it was Ben Franklin. Absolutely. Everybody thinks Benjamin Franklin brought up that idea about every, the uh, main things that are certain are death and taxes. And that in 1789, he did write an article about that. But it ends up, when you go to this website called QuoteInvestigator.com, which is a pretty neat thing, they do the research and they, find, they found that in 1716, um, Christopher Bullock wrote The Cobbler of Preston, and it says, "'Tis impossible to be sure thing but death and taxes." So How spoke a that? different language back then. But the idea is, it's impossible um, but a sure thing is death and taxes. And what happens in financial planning, there is death and taxes. So what we plan in uh, Acres Financial Group, we talk about we plan as if death might happen tomorrow. We do all the estate planning, the beneficiaries, all the work for that. And then we plan investments to live a lifetime forever, basically. Then we talk about taxes and why they're such a big piece of cash flow. So the idea here is that that taxes are certain, but we can have ways to control them. And so when people come in and they ask the question, the question is, I pay too much in taxes, what can I do? We then talk about how to control our taxes when we have the ability based on how we've saved our money over a lifetime. So what are your thoughts on that question, Mr. Paul Franco? Yeah, I mean, it's it's especially, you get it almost two ways. One, one, one situation where it's like, I'm paying way too much taxes now, what can I do to change that? And then almost then taking a look at the future and you're saying, wow, I'm going to pay a ton in taxes later. How can I fix that? And so it's, it's, it's almost a battle that we have to work through um, on paying the least amount of tax now, but also understanding that we do believe taxes are going up in the future. So in a lot of situations, it does make sense to pay tax now and never again. And so that's what we, especially um, as, as new clients come in and they 
bring their portfolio and they're trying to work through, okay, should I be doing pre-tax? Should I be doing Roth? Um, ultimately, we have to forecast out sort of what your taxes are going to look like in the future using a certain set of assumptions. And so the difficult part, Brian, is that we don't know if taxes are going to go up in the future for certain. I think we're pretty, there's a pretty high probability of that. Um, and so ultimately, we need to do planning to ensure that the tax planning we're doing now is going to create more wealth for you in the future. Paying the least amount of tax possible, that's optimizing a tax plan. Yeah, I, I was thinking about this really great saving couple that came in. And I, I think they're actually radio listeners also. And they, um, they've done a really great job of saving money. And then the reality that I had to tell them is they did such a great job you're going to stay at these highest tax brackets. <laughs> They're not going down. I've had similar situations. Absolutely. And that's actually pretty normal for um, Acres clients that have been around a long time. Um, it's also normal for people that put money away and save. And it's normal for those that have had long-term 401ks, TSPs, 403bs, is that the only choice forever was a pre-tax. And so what happens is we had a discussion about tax rate now. They were 24%. And tax rate when you retire, the way the tax law works, um, twenty four year 24 and the year 25, tax rates that will be like 12% or 10, 12, and then 22, 24, and then, then you start getting into the 33 range. Now, in, in 2026, that law sunsets, depending on who wins the election and everything, then we'll be able to know when it comes to, to the actual rate that we're going to have, will it be a new rate or go back to 2017, which makes the 22% bracket go to 25, makes the 25 bracket go up to actually yeah, 24, 24 bracket, to the 28. Yep. 28. And then part of it goes all the way to 31. It sure does. Yep. So like depending on what income you have, you might end up paying not just so, so like right now it might be 24 and they might be room to convert and pay tax now where if you don't, it's going to come out at minimum 28, maybe 31. Right. That's and, exactly right. And that's, that's just yeah. the next two years, right, Brian? It's like we sort of know if, if there's no changes to if they don't extend Tax Cut and Jobs Act, then taxes will go up in the next two years. And so you're, you're exactly right. Those are sort of two golden years in 24 and 25 to really take a look at the tax plan and make sure we're paying the least amount of tax possible. Yeah. Um, I think the hardest thing is all about, uh, we don't know the taxes in the future. I think we know the tax law today based on today's tax law. What's a wise decision for those that can stomach it and pay the tax now and never again, that's called a Roth conversion. And that can be a great part of retirement plan to get things into tax free. Getting things into tax free means you got to pay the tax. Now, paying it now might make a lot of sense if your taxation is going to be level into your retirement years or actually go up. Now, reasons they might go up is if one of the spouses pass away, all of a sudden your individual rates, the income comes in and boom, the widow, widower is all, all of a sudden at a bracket that could be double the rate they're currently paying. Yep. Yeah, I have a I have another example, Brian, um, client I just met with and I'll be meeting with soon, um, where they're in that same sort of situation, about 24% tax brackets where they're in now, getting ready to retire early next year, understanding that actually the mother is not doing very well with her health. Now, the current laws around inheriting accounts and inheriting retirement accounts is that you have a 10-year period to liquidate that money, and you have annual amounts you have to take each year. However, it has to be fully withdrawn in that 10-year period. So yeah. between the income we are going to be sending them and income between pensions and Social Security and investments, there is a whole new layer of of income that is going to be a problem in the next five to 10 years if they don't change those laws around that 10 year period, which I don't think they will, yeah. is they're going to have to take another sixty, seventy thousand $70,000 a year of RMDs on top of the income that they're already doing. So we're doing tax planning for them converting now in the 24%, but also doing tax planning for the mother. And trying to do stuff where we're optimizing her lower tax rate now, yeah. 
with the higher bracket that the the son and daughter are in. So it, there's a, I mean, it's like like we say, there's so many different situations we see, and it you have to know and make the best decision, and we want to help you do that. Right, and that begins like when somebody comes in to me, we talk about that question, then we got we basically start doing the work to come up with the best answer for that person. That takes some meetings, multiple meetings. The thing is, is that when our clients become clients and they come in every year, these are the topics we cover every year. What is best now? What do you want to accomplish now? When do you need money? How much do you need? What's going on? What big event? What big projects or goals? All that costs money. Where do we get it from? We like to have multiple buckets in the dream retirement setup. We love to have almost all tax free, but we love (laughs) to do that with as young as you can come to Acres Financial Group. Let's get started with some tax free savings. So later on, we won't even talk about taxes. We'll have it all figured out. I, I, I love that. And there's so many books out there of, you know, Rothifying and be, having a 0% tax rate. And the reality, no Brian, one is has a Rothifying book. I'm trying to do that one. Oh, okay. I like that one. I like the word. <laughs> Rothified right, well, would be the name. Consider it a preview to Brian Aker's future book then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The problem is I want to actually write every page, which is cool. Yeah. But, but ultimately the reality is that becoming 100% tax free is almost, is, is very unlikely in, in, for most client situations, yeah. but trying to build out as much tax-free money that we can. And that gives us the flexibility to say, okay, can we withdraw from our from our Roth money that's tax-free or should we be withdrawing money pre-tax? Are we charitable? Is there anything we want to do there? Yep. We can take it tax-free from the pre-tax side. There's, there's, a lot that, there's a lot that goes into that, Brian. Yeah, Paul always goes deep. Paul I goes tried deep. not to. I tried not to. The reason Paul goes <laughs> deep is because he's very excited about financial planning and about trying to explain to everyone listening that It's something where you need a coach, you need help, you need someone to know all the other choices out there and then give you these options for you to decide based on the advice of an advisor, someone that actually is going to guide you into these questions and into these right answers. How you inherit money, how do you retire, how you draw money, taxes are a part of every one of those pieces, so you have to know taxes and your advisor needs to know taxes, not just the product they're selling or the one investment they want to put you in. I believe if there's no talk about taxes and cash flow, is it really the best investment? I think you really got to drive your answer from what's best for that client. And we've been doing this for many, many years. It's not a new thing at Acres Financial Group. The idea is what is right for you then let's decide the investment. Couldn't agree What more. works? And that, that takes time to truly, truly get a good answer for everybody. Absolutely. All right. So we want you to enjoy your retirement. And we all know the best part of retirement is when you get your time back, where you decide how to use it. Before retirement, your time is tied up with other commitments, you know, mainly your job. A lot of that goes away in your retirement. Your time is now consumed by things that you want to do. It's so easy to begin winning in retirement. Go to our website at acresfinancialgroup.com, scroll through the schedule a meeting section, and let us know you'd like to schedule your free consultation with one of our team of advisors. That's acresfinancialgroup.com, or you can call us at 833-WIN-RETIRE. That's 833-W-I-N-R-E-T-I-R-E. We'll call you on Monday to schedule a free in-person meeting. Go to acresfinancialgroup.com or call us at 833-946-7384 to start planning for your retirement now. Do you ask for directions? When it comes to investing, it's a good thing to do. We'll explain all of this when we return in a moment. You're listening to a pre-recorded show. Welcome back to Winning in Retirement. Call 833-WIN-RETIRE now to schedule a visit with Brian and his team and begin winning in retirement. Once again, here's Brian Akers. Welcome back to Winning in Retirement. I'm Brian Akers, president and founder of Akers Financial Group. Our radio podcast is called Winning in Retirement. And today I have Paul Franco. He has a master's of business administration, MBA. He's also a financial advisor here at Akers Financial Group. And we enjoy having you on the radio, Paul, because I know you're meeting with a lot of people, a lot of clients talking about these subjects each and every day. So you're on you're on the ground, on the field, working each and every day, helping people I'll achieve their goals through retirement planning. And that's why you and I put this show together called Your Important Questions. Because when people come in and they have that first question, we want to talk about, well, you have the question, how do we answer that question? And what is the best way for you to think about it when it comes to talking to a financial advisor? We really believe this show is valuable for you to understand our mindset 
and also to begin to have your own mindset on financial planning so that when you come in, you have some thoughts, you have thought about some ideas, but you don't have to have all the answers. That's what financial advisors and planners should do is help to guide you into the right decision based on where you are today. We call that your unique financial fingerprint. And from there, we build into the answer. All right, Paul. So in this fourth quarter here, people come in and they say, I need help with how to invest. One of our jokes on the way in was how, I mean, do you ask for directions? Now, Mm -hmm. honestly, you and I being on the male side of things, we're known not for asking directions. Um, You're younger than me. You typically go to your phone and get directions there. Is that fair to Sometimes, say? Sometimes, yep. All right. I, I like to just go. And I, I know the roads. I know the general direction. Uh-huh. I get close. Um, I might get in trouble sometimes with my wife or circling into a spot without looking at the map. <laughs> but the maps have, have helped us not to ask for directions. Right. But has Paul Franco ever stopped his car and, and looked out the window or at a gas station? Hey, Where's this? Or ask for a direction like that. Have you I, ever done I that? I sure have. Yeah. Oh, really? I, I okay. sure have. Does that surprise you? <laughs> well, I, I picture you would do what a lot of us do, which is, well, we're going to find it. We're not going to yeah. ask anybody. Well, when you're in areas that there's no service and areas you're not familiar in, usually those, you know, the, the local uh, gas station cashier can help point you the right direction. Yeah. And then I, I try to do my best to remember it and then find myself lost sometimes. That That's what happened when I was in West Virginia just last year. <laughs> Uh, well, this this seems like exactly what people are doing when it comes to investing. They're trying to figure out on their own, trying to get yeah. to a destination on their own, and then they get to a, a section, a spot in life, and they realize, all right, well, I'm not quite sure how to bring this home, how to finish it. What should I do now? And so they come in with that first question about needing help on how to invest, but it comes out of a concept of trying to do it on their own, trying to do it, choices at work, and then there's a point when they realize I could sure use some help. Now, Absolutely. So how do you handle that kind of question as they walk in with that? Yeah, well, we, we always like to call it usually the second or third meeting is really take an evaluation and take a look at where the money's invested and how the money is invested. Because sometimes what I've found is that, and I, I just had this the other day, this is, you know, the, within the past week, um, where we sat down and really took a look at how much risk we were taking in a portfolio versus how much was truly protected. Protected meaning cannot go down with the market. And I said, is that something you're happy with? Are you happy with the level of risk you're taking? And Brian, it was about 95% at risk in the market and about 5% that was protected through cash and money market and CDs in a client's portfolio who's going to be retiring towards the end of next year. And so the reality was that, oh, I didn't, sometimes it takes us being able to look at that and from the outside and really show them where their money's invested for them to say, I don't want to be taking that level of risk in my portfolio anymore. I don't have the time to recover from a big market decline that I did have 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. And so that's a very real situation we, we, we deal with. And that's just by doing a simple evaluation at first that just says how much risk versus how much protected do we have in a portfolio? Yeah, the defining the, the finding what the risk is and them understanding that it's great that things go up in a good market, but they don't want it to go down. They want investments that go up and never go down, but that's not reality of getting the, all the market up and, and also not going down. The hardest part is that people sometimes don't know the risk they're taking. They just know mm-hmm. that it feels like risk because of the past volatility from a couple of years ago or even 10 years ago or 13 years ago when things really hit the bottom, they, they look at that and they go, I don't want that again. What can I do differently? And so what process do you go through with that person to actually know where to start? Well, we like to have an idea on how soon we need to be drawing money. I like to have money that's, that's being provided as income to come from risk-free investments. Like an example of that would be if we know we're going to be drawing money for the next year and a half or two years, I like to have that money set aside in a money market, not taking any risk in the market. So almost thinking of it in certain time horizons of, okay, how soon do I need to draw this money out? That governs how much risk we take in the market, if any. 
Then there's that next layer. We can take a little more risk to get by dividend, low, low, lower risk, conservative, more investing. Um, and then there's that next layer after that, Brian, where we can take more risk and have that money grow and try to keep pace with inflation the best way we can. And so balancing that out is figuring out, okay, what does your situation look like? What does your financial fingerprint call for in the sense of how much income we need to draw from these investments? That can then govern how I would be recommending to invest. All right. So the listener is driving around. They're in their car and they, they heard what you just said. And then they go, well, how do we begin? Now, my answer would be you simply have to call Acres Financial Group to start with a, having a meeting, a free meeting. And then what kind of information should they bring so that that can be figured out? Generally, it's just we, we like to see statements. We want to see statements where your money's currently at. Um, that would be the very first thing we want to see. Yeah, statements and also inv investment choices at your retirement plans at work, understanding how much you have saved in the bank, how much money you have in any investment that you might have, even if it includes that you have a business or rental businesses, whatever wherever you have your net worth, because understanding your net worth and then your cash flow will really dictate what investments need to do. And then you start examining the investments. And so we do analysis of the actual investments you have through different software that we do, where we can actually look at your holdings, look at your concentration, look at your allocations, and then come back and say, well, is this what you want? Yeah. And yeah. Then they say, well, I don't know. And then we talk about, well, Describe it like more like a like a photo. Like, do do you want risk? Do you want the volatility of the whole market a little bit? Um, do you want me to come back and say, oh, you lost fifteen percent, thirty percent, ten percent? What's the the downside um, amount that you can handle? Yeah, I'll, I'll give you a simple example of that. Just from um, a client that I had that they were invested in a Vanguard target date retirement fund. Sure. And so this is actually a lot of people listening are probably saying, okay, I'm, I am invested in that as well. What, what, what should I be doing? And so one of the things we looked at was, okay, let's go online. Let's look at the fund prospectus. Let's look inside of it. Let's look how much international right. exposure we have in just the 2025 target date fund. And so we take a look at that and we see there's about a 37% international between their stock and bond mix and there and you and the client sat there and said that's too high right and i said yes <laughs> i i think it is but that's why it's so important and that's a simple example but um why to be more specific in 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 how we're recommending allocations yeah i, I actually went to the actual one it came when it came to the 2025 actually the other day and they've actually brought it down to 27 percent on the 25 the 37 38 piece is actually a lot for older for people that are younger but they have a, a, a lot more than what used to be 15, 16% was the number that people used to put in international. The concept over the last 40 years has been you add international, you actually, if you add up to a certain level, you reduce your overall risk and add return. That has not been true the last decade. And so when you look at allocations, we do want to have some international, but not too much. Right. So the key thing in a target date, it might be riskier than you think because they don't have any of it safe. None of it has no risk. It, no matter what company provides the target date fund, they're designing it around a mix of stocks and bonds. The stocks are based on an allocation that would be international and U.S. Um, computers would say U.S., the, the international valuations are down. Mm -hmm. And I agree that they are down, but there's a reason they're That's down. Right. There's lots of things going on that will have them down and maybe stay down for a while. So the hardest part is how do you want your money managed? How do you want your money managed? Not anybody else's, not the person at the water cooler or whatever they, wherever you get your, your <laughs> coffee, I guess, coffee machine. Um, not the advice there. You need to look at where your money is now exactly and what is right for you and your family. That's where we begin. Exactly. And, and that has to be done. And that's hard to realize that if, if in your retirement plans at work, you have choices. Sometimes they're limited. And what's nice when you hit 59 and a half, you could do something called an in-service withdrawal and take some of the money out, especially on the lower risk side to try to improve and then look at the expenses, the cost. Is it worth having an advisor or not? You got to weigh all those out when you're making a decision to ever roll out of a 401k. It's not an automatic decision. You have to weigh out 
the advice that you're given to make sure it makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Then, and trying to work through then that next layer of, okay, if we need more money protected, how do we protect that money? And how can we invest in and grow that money in a way that's taking no risk in the market, but maximize the return that we get? And so that's what we love to do when we sit down and work with you is we now see where you're taking risk in the market, um, how much risk you're not taking in there as well, but then optimizing that as well to, to get the best return possible. Yeah, we've had um, recently had a couple of cases where like the husband loves the investing, it's fun, but then as you get closer to the retirement, the, their spouse is coming in and saying, oh, this has to be real. I want mine, not like his. <laughs> right, <laughs> I had right. one actually where the one, the husband's a day trader and the wife wants the direct opposite. And she goes, I want you to manage my money, not my husband anymore. <laughs> I thought that was funny. But the idea is this, financial planning has to be individualized and yours. We start with a unique financial fingerprint to come up with an answer that fits your exact situation. That's good planning. And that's what we want to invite you to do through our advisors at Acres Financial Group. Thank you very much for a good show, Paul, about the important questions that people have when they come in to see you. Thank Appreciate you very much, that. Brian. All right, so we look forward to actually meeting with you. We want you to win in retirement. So take advantage of the opportunity to begin planning with us at Acres Financial Group. To schedule a free meeting with one of our team of advisors, go to our website at acresfinancialgroup.com. Scroll to the schedule a meeting section and let us know you'd like to schedule your free meeting. That's acresfinancialgroup.com, or you can call us at 833-WIN-RETIRE. That's 833-W-I-N-R-E-T-I-R-E. We'll give you a call on Monday to schedule your free in-person or Zoom meeting with one of our team of advisors. Start planning for your retirement now. Go to acresfinancialgroup.com or call us at 833-946-7384. Thank you for listening. I'm Brian Akers from Acres Financial Group, and we want you to be winning in retirement. You've been listening to Winning in Retirement with your host, Brian Akers of Acres Financial Group. Acres Financial Group offers securities through Arcadios Capital, an SIPC and FINRA member firm. Advisory services are provided through Arcadios Wealth. Acres Financial Group and Arcadios do not share any common ownership. Neither Arcadios nor Acres Financial Group provides tax or legal advice. Advice given on winning in retirement is general in nature, and one should seek further advice from their financial advisor, broker, attorney, and or tax accountant before investing. Be sure to read each prospectus carefully to understand all the risks associated with each investment. Examples and scenarios shared are meant to be for illustrative purposes only. Past performance is not indicative of future results.